Hi, I'm Ryan Blank with BuiltToExplore.com. Today we're exploring Dublin, Ireland. Located on the east coast of Ireland is Dublin. Dublin, meaning dark pool, is named for a tidal pool that was located just behind where Dublin Castle now stands. While people were living in the area previous to this, the Vikings arrived in the 9th century and settled Dublin. Over the course of the next thousand years or so, the city changed hands several times, eventually coming under the control of the British Empire. In the year 1919, Ireland declared its independence from the British, fighting the War of Irish Independence and won rights to govern itself. They officially left the UK Commonwealth in 1949. Today, it is the center of Ireland's industry, education, economy, and government. All this means that there is an incredible wealth of history to explore in this great city. One of our first stops is Trinity College, established in 1592. It is Ireland's oldest university. It is a beautiful campus to walk through, either by yourself or through a guided tour. Another reason to visit Trinity College, and one of the largest tourist attractions in Dublin, is the Book of Kells, which is housed in the University Library. The Book of Kells is one of Ireland's national treasures. It is a book created by Celtic monks around 800 AD. It contains the four Gospels written in Latin with elaborate decorations and illustrations. For nine euros, you can go in and look at a couple pages that are on display in the library. When we arrived, the line was quite long so we decided to skip it since we had other things on our itinerary and there were examples of earlier biblical writings not far away. Dublin Castle is our next stop. It was initially built in the 13th century, but unfortunately most of the medieval castle structure is no longer around. A fire, demolition, and renovations over the years have left a more modern look to the buildings. All that remains of the medieval structure is one of the towers. Record Tower, as it is called, was a high security prison in its time. Chapel Royal, built in the early 1800s, is attached to the tower now. The castle buildings have been used for various government functions over the years and is now mostly used for state functions and house a few governmental offices. You can take a tour of the grounds, some of the buildings and state rooms on Dublin Castle to get a little more history. Also on the grounds is Dublin Gardens, which is located where the tidal pool that gave Dublin its name once was. Located on the grounds of Dublin Castle is the Chester Beatty Library, which houses a collection of Greek papyrus New Testament manuscripts dating all the way back to the 3rd century. These are some of the earliest New Testament writings in existence. A great collection of early Islamic and East Asian manuscripts and artifacts are also housed and are on display in the library. If you have the time, it is certainly worth a visit, and admission is free. The Guinness Storehouse is another popular attraction of Dublin. They offer a tour of the storehouse, which was really more of a museum tour than a brewery tour you might expect. The atrium and starting point of the tour is seven stories tall and shaped like a pint glass. That's big enough to hold over 14 million pints of Guinness. The tour is self-guided as you walk through the process of brewing beer. They also have several displays of some of the old equipment used in earlier days and some of the advertising that helped turn Guinness into the global brand it is today.
The tour takes you up through seven floors, eventually bringing you to what they call the Gravity Bar, which is where you can enjoy a pint of the famous beverage, which is included in the price of admission. What really makes the trip worthwhile is the almost 360 degree view of the city. Another bar and restaurant is located on the fifth floor and offers some food and live music if your timing is right. All in all, it's a pretty good tour. And if it's your first time in Dublin or if you've never been, you ought to check it out. Grafton Street, connecting Trinity College and St. Stephen's Green, is one of the main shopping streets in Dublin. It is a mostly pedestrian street where a variety of street musicians, artists, and performers entertain the crowds of shoppers. Make sure to spend some time strolling along the street and enjoying the sights and sounds. In 1663, the city of Dublin created a park to sell the land around it and raise some revenue. That park was called St. Stephen's Green. Access to the park was only for local residents until 1777, when Arthur Edward Guinness, yes, of that same Guinness family, pushed for opening the park to the public, as well as paid to bring the layout of the park close to its current form. My final stop is along O'Connell Street. It's Dublin's main thoroughfare and the widest urban street in Europe. It offers plenty of shopping, restaurants, pubs, as well as several statues and the world's tallest sculpture. With only two days in Dublin and part of that time recovering from jet lag, I barely scratched the surface of what Dublin has to offer. On my next trip to Dublin, I will have to check out both Christ Church and St. Patrick's Cathedrals, the Kilmainham Jail, and the old Jameson Distillery. And while I'm not much of a nightlife type, I will still have to spend a little time hanging out in Temple Bar, enjoying a little bit of the Irish pub life in Dublin. There are numerous museums and gardens slash parks in Dublin and plenty of other sites to explore no matter how long your stay is. With that, I will say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when we go exploring someplace new.